Greetings everyone. Today I'm taking a look at Sigma's latest super zoom lens for APS-C cameras. It's their new 18 to 300 mm f3.5 to 6.3 DC macro C for contemporary. Its incredible focal range of 18 to 300 mm goes from a wide angle, as you can see here, zooming all the way into super telephoto for catching shots of just about anything that happens to be far away. Pretty comprehensive, right? That mammoth 16.7x zoom range would have been the biggest available for anyone with a Canon camera, but Sigma got seriously unlucky with this lens. A few months before it came out, Tamron decided to release a 16 to 300 mm super zoom lens, as you can see here, which offers just a little extra zoom range again, starting from a wider angle and thus taking the wind out of Sigma's sails somewhat. Sneaky old Tamron. However, Sigma super zoom lenses do have a reputation for offering superior image quality to the competition. So let's take a look at their new lens and judge for ourselves. I'll compare it to the Tamron lens later in this review. Super zoom lenses have a huge zoom range, but they normally pay for this by offering weaker picture quality. They also have darker maximum apertures than other lenses, and that is the case here. The maximum aperture of f3.5 darkens as you zoom in to a very dark f6.3 so the lens really does not let in a lot of light. That means it's tricky to work with at night, indoors, or when you want to get a fast shutter speed on your camera. Also, that dark aperture means you cannot get a very out-of-focus background with this lens, so it will often give you quite flat-looking images without much depth. However, this is quite normal for a lens with such a long zoom range. To help make up for the lack of light entering this lens, it comes with built-in image stabilization, also known as OS, to try and keep your image steady and give you sharper pictures. Here's some footage at 300mm with OS turned off, and now turned on. The optical stabilization is definitely helping, but the video still looks pretty shaky. This might not be the best lens in the world for handheld video work. The Tamron 16-300 does have slightly better stabilization than this. Well, let's look at the build quality. The lens feels like a nice, solid piece of equipment, looking nicely designed and without being too big, and coming with a lens hood for the front, which looks well designed, but it isn't very deep, so it probably won't help you that much to keep out direct sunlight. Unsurprisingly, the lens is a little weighty, weighing about 600 grams, or one and a quarter pounds. The lens barrel is crowded by a wide zoom ring. The zoom ring turns very smoothly and evenly, but also quite heavily. At the front of the lens is the focus ring. The tip of it has some nice rubber ribbing for extra grip. That focus ring does turn smoothly, without any stickiness, which is good but it's also quite loose to turn and undamped. Also, it only turns a very short way. That short focus path could make manual focusing quite tricky. Another issue is that this lens does not have full-time manual focusing. If you want to use autofocus, then you'll have to turn it on, at which point you can't adjust manually anymore. You could try forcing the focus ring around with your fingers, but you'll probably just damage the mechanism. That kind of system is pretty old-fashioned these days, I think. I'm tired of seeing it on low-budget Sigma lenses. However, the lens's 72mm front element does not extend or rotate as you change focus. That's useful for people who might use polarizing or graduating filters. The autofocus motor itself runs at an average speed and it works accurately and very quietly, as you can see here. The autofocus motor does work reasonably well if you're doing video work. However, you will hear it making quiet clicking noises as it micro adjusts. Overall, the Sigma lens is a very sturdy piece of kit that will serve most people nicely in the field. However, I have seen better image stabilization in Canon and Tamron lenses, 
and also its autofocus system is a bit old hat. Ok, let's move on and look at image quality. I'll be testing the lens on a 20 megapixel Canon 70D. At 18mm and f3.5, the lens is sharp in the middle of the image, with only average contrast levels. As we look into the corners, we see some softness and quite strong chromatic aberration, also known as colour fringing, on contrasting edges. What you'd expect for this kind of lens, really. Stop the aperture down to f5.6 for a little more brightness and sharpness in those corners, and at f8, the corners are reasonably sharp although the heavy chromatic aberration does stick around. Back in the middle of the image, we continue to see a very sharp, clean picture. Let's zoom in to 35mm, where the maximum aperture has already darkened to f4.5. In the middle of the image, again, we see very good sharpness and average contrast levels. The corners continue to be much softer though, with quite noticeable chromatic aberration. Stop the aperture down to f8 for a major boost in sharpness, and the corners remain quite sharp, even at f11. The chromatic aberration remains a problem though, so it's a very similar performance to that at 18mm. Let's zoom in to 100mm. The lens is noticeably softer in the middle of the image now, at f5.6. However, the corners are not any worse, which is a relief, and we are no longer seeing chromatic aberration. Stop down to f8 for improved sharpness. Contrast levels are a bit weak though. Let's zoom in further to 200mm now. It's the same story. With the aperture open at f6.3, the image is a little soft in the middle with poor contrast. However, the corners are not much worse, and we are still not seeing too much colour fringing. Stop down to f8 for a notable improvement in sharpness and brightness in those corners, and for good sharpness in the middle of the image too. At 300mm again, the lens is rather soft in the middle of the picture, but the image is just about usable. The corners are a little softer too, and some green and purple chromatic aberration is re-emerging on contrasting edges. Still, it's nowhere near as bad as Tamron's 16-300mm lens. Stop down to f8 for improved corners, and stop down to f11 for reasonably sharp corners, and the middle of the image doesn't look too shabby either. So, what can we say overall? The Sigma 18-300 is an ok performer at wider angles, producing some sharp images, especially if the aperture is topped down a little bit. At the telephoto end of its zoom range, the lens can also produce some reasonably sharp images, again if you stop its aperture down. At both the wide angle and telephoto end, the lens struggles with quite noticeable chromatic aberration. Considering the absolutely enormous zoom range this lens has to grapple with, I'd actually class it as an acceptable optical performance. Ok then, let's look at vignetting and distortion levels. At 18mm we see strong barrel distortion that will be easily noticeable in your pictures. With the aperture open at f3.5, we see some darkness in the corners, but I've seen worse than this before. Stop the aperture down to f5.6 for more even illumination. The barrel distortion we saw at 18mm straightens out as soon as we zoom in to 22mm. However, once we zoom into 35mm, this flips over into very strong pincushion distortion, which will also be noticeable in a lot of photos. As you zoom all the way into 300mm, that pincushion distortion is slightly reduced, but still quite strong. When the aperture is open at f6.3, we do see some prominent vignetting in the corners of your images. Stop down to f8 for brighter corners, and f11 for even illumination. So when it comes to distortion levels, the lens gives us quite a roller coaster ride. Correcting distortion clearly wasn't a priority for Sigma in this case. The lens also displays some vignetting when its aperture is open, but I have seen worse levels than this before, so I would say that the vignetting is not too troublesome on this lens. The Sigma lens has quite a good macro capability, being able to focus as closely as 39cm, so it's pretty useful for close-up pictures of small objects. 
At f6.3, the close-up picture quality is a little soft, with low contrast and some purple color fringing. Stop the lens down to f8 though for more sharpness and a cleaner picture, and at f11, the close-up picture quality is pretty sharp, really. Let's test the lens against bright lights. Even at wide angles, the Sigma lens does tend to show quite a lot of lens flare, unfortunately, and it gets worse as you zoom in. You lose quite a lot of contrast here, even when the sun is not directly in the picture frame. A pretty so-so performance there. Now, it's not easy to get an out-of-focus background with this lens due to its narrow maximum aperture. When you do, though, the quality of its out-of-focus backgrounds is just okay. The out-of-focus highlights don't have any ugly outlining, but that bokeh does look quite bold and heavy when the image is more strongly out-of-focus. Also, complex backgrounds, such as foliage, can look quite bitty and busy. Well, overall, the Sigma 18-300 is a good enough option if a super zoom lens is what you're after. It has very nice build quality, although I don't love the design of its autofocus and its image stabilization really is a little jittery. When it comes to image quality, this is not a sharp lens in absolute terms, but considering its gigantic focal range, I'd say that its optics are pretty workable. You can always get a decently sharp picture, especially if you stop its aperture down a bit. It's nice to see super zoom lenses slowly getting sharper as the years go by. Well, I'd like to just quickly compare it with the overshadowing Tamron 16-300mm VC USD lens. When I reviewed the Tamron lens, I enjoyed using it for its two main strengths. Firstly, and uniquely for a super zoom lens, it goes as wide as 16mm. If you're like me and you really enjoy wide-angle photography, then that extra wideness makes a very nice difference. It could be super useful for getting pictures of broad landscapes or shots inside spacious buildings. And secondly, the Tamron has very nice build quality, with a bit more weather sealing than the Sigma lens, a much better focus mechanism, and slightly better image stabilization. I definitely prefer the build quality of the Tamron lens to the Sigma. However, if you're looking at image quality, the Tamron lens has some absolutely alarming levels of chromatic aberration. Here's a test shot taken at 300mm. What a mess! The Sigma lens has much less color fringing than the Tamron, which makes its images look noticeably better. The lenses are about as sharp as each other, although the Sigma lenses may be a touch sharper at the telephoto end when you stop down its aperture, and also it's sharper as a macro lens. For stills photographers, the Sigma lens gives better image quality. Also, the Sigma lens is a little less expensive. At the time of this review, it can be found for a little over £400. The Tamron is a little under £500. Quite pricey, really. People who really care about image quality or who need the less expensive option will almost definitely want to get the Sigma 18-300. People who like wide-angle photography and good build quality and who want slightly better image stabilization for their video work will prefer the Tamron lens. It is a tricky choice, but only you can decide.